Welcome to the Women in Ministry Leadership Podcast, powered by the King's University. This is a conversation to encourage and validate women on their ministry journeys. Now, let's join TKU's Julie Cole for this episode of the Women in Ministry Leadership Podcast. Welcome to the Women in Ministry Leadership Podcast. I'm Julie Cole, and I'm joined today with my co-host, Casey Smith-Lopez. She's one of our team members for Women in Ministry Leadership here at the King's University. Today, we are joined by our guest, Dr. Linda Hoover. Welcome, Hello. Linda. It's a We're pleasure so to be here with you today. You. Let me read your bio. Linda serves as the Executive Dean of Academics at the King's University as a licensed psychologist and an ordained minister, she has a heart of empowering others to realize their God-given potential and purpose. Linda enjoys sushi dates with her husband, Jared, <laughs> long walks, and cooking with her grandchildren. Welcome, Linda. Thank you for have having you today. me today. What um, stands out to me mm -hmm. in that bio is psychologist and ordained minister. There's a story there. <laughs> there There's a, story. a path there. <laughs> Can you give us the short version of how that combo happened and that you got here? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me here today, and I'm looking forward to our time together. Yeah. Um, I think my journey really started, uh, I mean, I've been a preacher's kid all my life, and so I'm um, seeing my parents in ministry, and so when I got married, my husband was the manager of the largest calf raising facility in the world. So I thought yeah. I was safe, that I wasn't <laughs> going to be, you know, in any form of ministry at that time. And then what I didn't know is that God really had called him into ministry. Mm -hmm. So I got tricked. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> in serving in pastoral ministry with him, and I just thought, you know, I, I want to be able to serve people in a, in a greater way. And I thought, well, maybe becoming a pastor myself, you know, and going through the credentialing and the, you know, the studies and all of that would give me some kind of credibility and um, kind of uh, accountability in that. And so I started taking classes and it took, you know, took a while to to um, finally go through all the steps of ordination. Yeah. But it it did give me a sense of that I was studying to show myself approved, uh -huh. you know, and being able to serve in a way um, that felt safe to people. Hmm. And I think with the the um, clinical part was I was a school administrator of an elementary school that had a preschool. Hmm. And I had all these students that would be coming in. I was also served as the principal, which was interesting. Um, I don't really have such a mean face. But anyway, <laughs> but I remember going home one day and I told my husband, I said, babe, we need to have the parents come to school and have the kids stay home because it's the these families are so messed up and you know their parenting mm -hmm. skills and this kind of thing and so it was day after day after day I was saying things like that and he's he finally said well why don't you go do something about it mm -hmm. and that's when I started looking into at that point it was um, marriage and family and so I did get my master's in marriage and family and then when I was you know, just on the, just about to finish that up, I thought, mm, I want to make sure that I have all the doors, you know, that could be open. I want to put, position myself in a way that I would have all the doors that could be open, you know, um, that I would be able to walk through those doors. And so I think the, the pursuit of the doctorate, while it was, it was almost like Apart from ministry, you know, as a as a pastor, there was that opportunity to almost have, feel like you had a secret life. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. I'm in school and nobody knows who I am, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it was in Santa Barbara. We lived in California at the time. So, I mean, going down to Santa Barbara two days a week is not a bad thing. No. I mean, just saying. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this just the what I came to realize as I was studying um, you know, all the psychology things was it's like so many of these theorists were raised in faith based, you know, Christian homes right. or Jewish homes. That's right. And so they had a they had some sort of a faith that was instilled in them as children. And as they grew up, that they came up with these theories and they just extracted God out of the mix and then gave us what their human wisdom, you know, mm -hmm. was left over. And I thought, well, if there's some way I can infuse the God part back in there, you know, because, and, and I remember telling a student one time, it's like, if all the world has is psychology and they don't have the God factor, they don't have the Holy Spirit, they don't have that transformational, you know, uh, 
opportunity yeah. from the Lord. It's like, well, they just have empty nothing. Mm-hmm. There's not any hope. It's like there's not the the opportunity for that, you know, deep healing that can mm-hmm. take place. And so I think my coming here to the Kings really helped to be able to bridge those two things together in a way that I didn't have, I had no idea mm-hmm. that God would allow that to happen. But again, mm-hmm. if I hadn't positioned myself in the pastoral role and right, really gone yeah. through the studies of that, and if I hadn't gone through all the clinical, that's 106 credit hours of <laughs> study, you know, dissertation and 3,000 hours of, yep. you know, of hours, you know, practicum hours and or internship hours, all of those things coming together, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Yeah. But I didn't see that back then. Mm-hmm. But God knew. And as I just walked in, you know, obedience to the next step, the next mm-hmm. step, then here I am yeah. sitting here with you today. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Awesome. What I hear you saying, too, through all of that is there there was a process and that wasn't always very clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of, you know, maybe our listeners are in that process now and kind of mm-hmm. a, a weird season of life where they're like, I mm-hmm. don't see how all of these dots connect. Can you yes. speak to that season a little bit of, yes. you know, maybe how you got through it, what you wish you would have told yourself back then? maybe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that I realized that God doesn't waste anything. Mm-hmm. And and what I what I see now, you know, hindsight is that all along the way that the Lord is like, okay, I'm going to deposit this in you. I'm going to deposit this. Yep. You're going to learn this from this particular situation or this job or this, you know, opportunity. Mm-hmm. And how he brings all of those together is 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 amazing to me. But I just know that he doesn't waste anything. And I remember there was a, a time when the Lord said, Linda, I've invested a mountain of raw materials in you. Mm-hmm. And now it's time to do something with it. And that's when I moved to Texas. Wow. And I was like, well, okay, game on, let's get it going, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think it's the methodical, um, just reaching out to the Lord and just being faithful with what he's calling you to do um, in the moment, in the season. And I think there's been a time in my life, and I, I think I've shared this in class, probably Mm -hmm. career counseling is where I shared this. Um, but I I think growing up, I had this fear. I was totally going to miss God's will and blow it. Oh, I just ruined my life, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and and it's like, I remember one day I was actually washing my glass top table in my breakfast nook. And it was like I the Lord just showed me. I didn't know if I was in the spirit on the Lord's day or what was happening exactly. But it was like this vision or this, you know, this open vision that I was seeing. And it was this hallway that had all of these doors. And the doors were at the sides of the hallway. And it was kind of like, Linda, that's how you see my will, that you're going to miss it. But instead, the hallway, it's like the doors changed to where they were just one after the other. And it was, how far do you want to go with me? Wow. It's not, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to blow it. Yeah. You know, if you just keep following me. And the other thing was, and you, and it was like, I could see, I would say like Buzz Lightyear, To infinity and beyond is what that hallway looked like (laughs) with door after door after door that was open. No limit. And you can go as far as you want to go, or you can stay in any room that you want to stay. Wow. It's up to you. And it's not going to, you're not going to miss what I have for you. Isn't that beautiful? I love love that. that. I love that. I love that. So I I would just say to anyone that's listening, it's like, don't be afraid that you're going to miss God's will. And when we posture ourselves posture ourselves to listen. And we made up this, this I say it, Lord, I made up my mind a long time ago that I'm going to obey you no matter what. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it's easy if I'm just listening and I'm obeying, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I may not always know. It's like, what do I do? That's where counsel comes in. That's where friends, you know, trusted friends and mentors come in to play. And I remember asking a uh, a lady who had been following the Lord for many years, I said, how do you know if it's God, you know, you're hearing God's voice and it's God's will. And this was her response. She says, he repeats himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. He does. He does. (laughs) He repeats himself. And she came back later and she goes, I'm sorry, I don't think I gave you a very good answer. And I'm like, no, that totally makes sense to me. Because it's like, if you have something that's in your spirit and it just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back, because God's not going to say, okay, I told you once that's it, it's over. You know, Mm -hmm. because he understands how Mm -hmm. we hear him. He understands how we process and, you know, and what our process is. Speaking of that, I can be like, shabam, let's do it. And my husband, we got to let the process happen. Mm -hmm. 
And I learned that early on in marriage. you got to let the process happen. But God knows how we process and what we need to have that reassurance and mm -hmm. that confirmation. I mean, he doesn't usually write it in the sky, you know, and or it's like, okay, here's the orders and tells us what to do next. But mm -hmm. it's it's like he wants us to pursue him and stay connected with yeah. him. And as we just follow like step by step by step, and, you know, it. I think the way that our life can unfold in front of us is just a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. we may not know what God's doing, but we can trust that he knows what he's doing with us. Mm -hmm. We just have yeah. to trust and obey. <laughs> hey, I want to tell you about one of the ways that King's University is committed to making higher education affordable to you. TKU has teamed up with Gateway Church to offer all new and returning students up to $1,500 off tuition expenses annually through the Blessed Life Scholarship. This scholarship is available to both in-person and online students, including part-time students. Along with Blessed Life, TKU offers many other scholarship options. So if you've been considering an undergrad or a graduate degree, but need some financial support, check out tku.edu backslash scholarships and find a scholarship option that fits your needs. One of the things I love about your journey that I think our listeners will benefit from too is how you and your husband have kind of done a tag team a bit. Mm -hmm. You were a faithful wingman and mm -hmm. wife of a pastor for years mm -hmm. while you were getting your degree. But at one point, your husband said, okay, it's my turn now to be your wingman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can yes. you talk about that partnership that mm -hmm. you've had in ministry and life? I've been so very blessed to have the husband that I have. Um, he has always been the kind of, of person who he, he wants to, he wants me to reach my full God-given potential. And he's always encouraged me. He's been my biggest cheerleader along the way. And, and you know, I've been that for him as well. And I think when our transition here to Texas, he told me, he says, you have followed me everywhere that God's led us. And he says, and now it's my time to follow you and mm -hmm. to support what God's called you to do. And I think sometimes, in, especially in pastoral ministry, as pastor's wives, quote unquote, we can really lose our identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't feel like we really have a, a place, a role. It's like, you know, it's uh, uh, people would call me Sister Pastor. I didn't even have a name, <laughs> you know. Oh, no. And so it's like, okay. Um, <laughs> and so in, in some ways, and I've, I've said this over the years, I kind of identify with the First Lady of the United States. And they're like, I said, by virtue of her husband's job, she has a whole bunch of things to do that she didn't really sign up for. Yeah. You know, and I've, we've gone into churches where um, this is actually a question we've been asked at the interview, um, which who goes, who has their spouse go with them to the interview? Pastors, mm -hmm. you know, um, do you play the piano? Uh, well, at that point I didn't, but I taught myself how to do it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, because, you know, you have to be a good piano player if you're going to be a pastor. You know, there's all these kinds of things. <laughs> And we can really lose our identity. Mm -hmm. I also think that it it can be when people get married, the wife can think that they don't have their own identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my reminder would be is we all stand before the Lord ourselves and give an account for our own lives. Right. Mm -hmm. And that and I think my process of, you know, with, with my husband was that he saw what that my talents, giftings, callings, and he supported that along the way. And there's, I know that there's some women that their their spouses don't. Yeah. They feel threatened, yeah. or they feel, you know, like she's going to take over, or make more money than I do, or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And and thankfully, Jared was never like that. He's always been my biggest cheerleader. I think um, in in just even realizing my own identity of what God wanted me, you know, who He was making who I was becoming and you know, how he was fashioning me and all of that and the calling that he really had on my life of what, what do I really want to do when I grow up? It took a while for me to really discover that. But I think especially when I started, you know, pursuing my education, um, I mean, I, I went when I started school and, you know, till I finished, it was about a 10 year journey. It's a long one. You know, yeah. it was it was not quite 10, but with everything, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it was a long time. And that was very diligent, mm -hmm. you know, um, but on his part as well, mm -hmm. on, on Jared's mm -hmm. part to say, 
you know, supporting. I remember when I graduated with my master's degree, I wrote him a card. He threw me a lovely party. Oh. And I wrote in there, thank you for thinking my dream was important enough to change our lives. Mm. Because he believed in me. Yeah. You know? And so I think those kinds of things can be so validating mm -hmm. and motivating. It's like, I really can do this. You know? So I think just the support, um, you know, of, of a spouse can be mm -hmm. huge. Support of friends, community. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's uh, I don't know. We say life is an adventure and every day is a gift. And so if you open it up and enjoy it. You know, some days I would like to just say, hey, let's take this back to the store, but, you <laughs> know, but otherwise, yeah, <laughs> return to sender. Um, so I hope that answered your question probably more than you needed, but yeah, it's <laughs> fantastic. It's great. I think one of the, with, one of the things that I love about the King's University oh. is this integration of, you know, practical along with, you know, the theological or academic side of things and that, mm -hmm. that integration. And that's what I hear in your story too, mm -hmm. of, you know, you have the pastoring side of things and then you have the, you know, clinical psychology side of things. Mm -hmm. How have you seen that work out in like the practical world, maybe in a, um, like a church setting of how, you know, the um, mental health aspects have integrated and helped you be successful yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, in the academic side of things, mm -hmm. vice versa, all the things, wherever you want to go. <laughs> well, so something that I realize is that when you're a counselor, you can't turn it off. And when you're a pastor, <laughs> you can't turn it off. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like the double, you know, the double whammy in there sometimes um, for other people. Because yeah. I've had people say, don't look at me like that. And then I've had other people say, tell me what you're seeing, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So yeah. I think... I think those giftings, you know, that nurturing, the um, maybe the discerning, you know, uh, words of knowledge, you know, that it's a it's a an activation of those just in how how I live, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. So it and it's almost like tapping into if I feel like a student really needs some counsel, mm -hmm. you know, pastoral nurturing, whatever that is, to be able to kind of take that out of, you know, and give it away. Um, I, that, I think that's how I see the integration. It, it's it's almost a seamless partnership of the giftings and the callings, um, and then to be able to, I don't know. I, I we talked about this one time before, Julie. That at my age, um, I feel this almost like this propelling of I need to give you know what I what God's poured in, what He's invested. Mm -hmm. You know, if it could help you, you know, mm -hmm. Casey, if this can help you, yeah. it's yours. You know, to give it away, mm -hmm. and um, and that I don't know. That to me is I think the God way. Give away what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, to steward that well and to pass it on to other people. And and I think the pastoral and the the experiences clinically and you know in the church can I think can help can help people kind of know where the rocks are, I guess, not fall yeah. in the creek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have the pastoral experience, the experience in psychology, but you're also just a really great executive leader. Mm -hmm. And that talent has been discovered at the King's University. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you've been given a great amount of mm -hmm. responsibility and big projects that you've overseen. Mm -hmm. But I regularly hear you say this mantra, but it still has to be fun. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> Talk to me about how you make big changes and difficult things fun. How does that fun element get woven into what you do? Hmm. That's a really good question. I think um, I really like a challenge. <laughs> I really like a challenge. So the kind of things... It, it, and it probably started early on in my childhood when my mom would say, honey, can you, um, my necklace has a knot in it. Can you get it out? I'm like, oh, yeah. So, I mean, as a little kid, just the, the challenge of unraveling or unknotting or like a mm -hmm. skein of yarn that was just all tangled up. It's like, can you get this to where we can use it? That kind of thing was, it. I looked at it as a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. small little baby challenge. So maybe that's just how I'm looking at it now. When mm -hmm. I see things, it's like, it's the pretzel that needs to be straightened mm -hmm. or it's the, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think the idea of helping people to feel like they're part of the team, mm -hmm. you know, that they're, they have some ownership, what, you know, their perspective, their, you know, their ideas, all of that are valuable. It's like, I'd be the first to admit that, I mean, I don't know everything. I don't know what to do. It's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're using words I don't even understand, you know, <laughs> especially when they start talking all the theology stuff and, you know, different things. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm lost in this. But there's usually some way that I can 
you know, it's like, I like, you know, we need what you have there and we need what you have and let's put it out here and see what we can make with that. That to me is exciting. Mm -hmm. So just to take all of the, you know, take the strengths, take, take the, the thoughts, the, I don't know, the contribution. I value the contribution of That's other good. people. And I think that, you know, in, in, in that value um, and then valuing what they're bringing, uh, that, I think that, that makes a difference in how people feel of, of how they're serving and the significance that yeah. their contribution is making. Mm -hmm. And I, I, in, I think I enjoy just the, I, I like the feel of that. It feels good to my innards mm -hmm. when that happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when you're in a leadership role, a lot of times there's transition, there's right. times of change, big or small. Mm -hmm. um, how do you handle that? What, what does that look like for you and your leadership and your experience? Mm -hmm. With transitions, um, I know that they're not a surprise to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I think allowing us time to grieve when we have a loss, you know, that's important not to just say, okay, well, another, you know, just let's just forget they ever were here or whatever. Because, I mean, we all have in our lives, we have transition here, but we also have transitions at home. We all have hard things that we may be dealing with yeah. and with mm -hmm. our families. Um, you know, kind of, I'm in kind of the, the sandwich generation kind of thing where I have aging parents who are, you know, not doing mm -hmm. well. I have children who are, I mean, my kids are married, but, you know, grandchildren and family life and all of those kinds of things. And they're all in transition and they're moving and, you know, all these, there's a lot of transitions that are huge yeah. to try to manage. But I think in, in the changes that we, that are planned, you know, that you know is coming, like a promotion, or you have, um, you know, you're starting a new job and you're all excited about it, mm -hmm. or you're moving to a new house or all mm -hmm. those kinds of things. There's, an, and I was uh, kind of coined this in my own life as these little micro transitions and adjustments that happen mm -hmm. that you don't plan on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't figure it's going to take this much emotional energy or this much right. physical energy to like get used to something that's, you know, a new routine and a new, mm -hmm. um, and I'll give you an example, and this is ridiculous, but... <laughs> We bought a new couch. I've been wanting a different style of couch. Mm -hmm. We'd had the same couch for 18 years. <laughs> and it looks great. Oh. I mean, it was a good, it was a really good brand of couch, you know. And so, um, but I'm like, babe, we, we really need to get a different color. It needs to be a different style, all this kind of stuff. So out goes the old couch, in comes the new one. It feels like a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... This couch is, this is not part of our family. It doesn't this know you. Doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> sit the same. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't, you know, it's all the, and, and so I'm, one morning I was sitting, not on the couch, um, but right in my journal. And I said, I started laughing out loud. I'm like, I wanted this couch. And now it's like, well, you know, I'm adjusting to it. Right. I, I didn't figure I'd have to adjust to something so you know, minimal as a couch. But I think there are things in transition that we have to allow ourselves that time to kind of process yes. and get used to the new and the change. And, the you know, it's learning new people. It's welcoming mm -hmm. new people onto our teams. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. maybe stepping into a role that feels strange, you know. And I think I think about it when I stepped into to the role as the executive dean, it was a large learning curve. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You know what? This full transparency here. I looked up executive dean online to see what is an executive dean and what do they do. So you're doing what Google says you should do. Yes. <laughs> Google and yeah. Jesus. Or maybe Jesus and Google. But I, I, I think how we approach transition, um, we can be, you know, full of trepidation and, you know, kicking rocks and mm -hmm. hopefully not kicking the dog, you know, but it's like we can, we can be glum about it or we can be um, overwhelmed by it. But I think those are invitations in the transition that if we lean there, it's an invitation to lean on the Lord in a different way or lean on friends in, in yeah. ways or, you know, our community, our family um, in, in helping us with that adjustment, because it, it doesn't have to be something, uh, even if it's something that we really want, um, there can still be adjustments that we just don't plan on those little micro adjustments, micro transitions that we have, you know. So I don't know. I'm probably the kind of person that embraces the change. And it's like, this is great. It's something new. Um, 
and but not everybody's like that, yeah. and they have a harder time yeah. with it. And I say, I would just say, allow yourself time to do the processing that you need to do. And I also would say it's an invitation from the Lord to just to draw closer to him. Because when you don't know, he's the expert at everything. So he's going to help you. Yeah. It's not like he's going to say, well, I brought you here. Now you're on your own and walk out the door. He's not going to do that. I think one of the verses I've really been kind of marinating, uh, ruminating, whatever, pondering, um, is that the Lord is faithful in this season and to every generation, mm. every generation. So he was faithful to yeah. my parents and their parents and their parents and mm -hmm. my to, to me, to my kids and my grandkids yeah. and eventually great grands and, you know, however long that goes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and just the faithfulness of God in every season, mm -hmm. wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever age you're in, whatever job you're in, what all of that, that he's going to be faithful no matter what. And I, I get this image in my mind where the Holy Spirit reaches out his hand like this. I don't know if Holy Spirit has a hand. I don't know. But <laughs> reaches out and he says, I'm going to invite you. Do you want to come with me? Mm. I can say no. But if it's like, uh, you know, are you up for the adventure? Mm -hmm. you no, know, that's kind of how I feel. And maybe that's how I look at transition. Mm. Try to find the adventure. You got to have fun, right? Yeah. Even Amen. in the hard things. Um, yeah. So I guess yeah. that's my answer to yeah. that one. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of young women in your classes. You you teach in the undergrad and graduate departments. Uh, what would you say you see are some of the challenges uh, that women that feel called into ministry mm -hmm. are facing today that have your heart? That's it. I would say identity and probably um, the whole idea of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's interesting because I've been dealing with that with, um, with faculty, adjunct faculty, because I have, I think, uh, I don't know, like 200 adjunct faculties on my HR yeah. list yes. or something, you wow. know. So, um, but when I have new people coming in, the, it's, it's the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I think that both of those with identity, I mean, imposter syndrome has to do with that, really. It does. Um, but if you think about like fear of success, that's a thing, fear mm -hmm. of failure. I mean, there's all these kinds of things that the enemy will come at at us, you know. But I think identity and really knowing who who they are in Christ, mm -hmm. who they are, not what the world says, not what family says, not what, you know, it's like, but to really have that really settled mm -hmm. in their lives and to be able to help to speak into that, yeah. you know. And I think that's one of the things like with um, – our student development and the opportunities mm -hmm. that we have here in the classroom, outside the classroom, mm -hmm. I think is, is that's one of the things, if we can help people to really, you know, students to really know who they are in Christ and who Christ yeah. has called them to be, we're human beings, not human doings, mm -hmm. right? So what he's called them to be and the, the, the calling and what we do um, really comes out of that knowing who we are mm -hmm. in Christ mm -hmm. really does. Mm -hmm. And when we can, and if the enemy can come in and, and just keep that all stirred up all the time and it's like, oh man, I can't do this. I can't do that. I would say, uh, pay attention to the kind of the, what's playing in your mind over and yeah. over and you can change the narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think identity is a big one. And then the imposter syndrome, I think it's, it's, it's almost, I get this image of like cutting the legs out from somebody. You know, it's like, I've done the studies, I've done, you know, what I need to do to show myself approved, you know, to be able to step into this role, whatever the role may be. Um, but then putting it into practice. And if the enemy can stop mm -hmm. that before it really gets, you know, full blown started, mm -hmm. um, that that's the kind of thing that I'm a pretty mild mannered person most of the time. But that kind of stuff makes me angry mm -hmm. because yeah. it's like, uh, uh. That, you know, I don't, I don't mess with my people. That's usually <laughs> what I say, you know, it's like, don't yeah. mess with my people. Um, because I know that the calling that the Lord has put in people's heart, that's something to me that we steward. It's a treasure to me that God would entrust us um, as professors, yeah. faculty is here at the King's staff, that God would entrust people and their calling to us to, yeah. to steward and, and to nurture and to help them to grow and to, you know, who God wants them to be. So mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. how you talked about that internal self-talk. Mm -hmm. So kind of on that, that same conversation, mm -hmm. 
what would be a, a line or maybe an idea that you'd like to, um, you know, say to that student? Um, like just a couple of verses. I know that um, for me this last week I had was going through Strengths Finders and, you know, getting some coaching mm-hmm. on that. And they had said a line that I had really been struggling with. Mm-hmm. And in that coaching session, I was able to take that line and bring it into my internal self-talk mm-hmm. to change the narrative. And mm-hmm. it really changed my perspective this week. So yes. do you have a line or anything? like that that you'd like to say to a student or a listener yeah absolutely this is my all-time favorite (laughs) does that sound like jesus Mm. Mm. if it doesn't sound like jesus it probably isn't Mm -hmm. so god's not going to say you're worthless you're dumb you can't do it you can't 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 all these things he's not that doesn't Mm -hmm. sound like jesus so if it doesn't sound like him it's not so you can just disregard that um that's good so that to me is always the gauge Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing w- along those lines is pay attention to how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're feeling anxious or if you're feeling depressed or you're feeling, you know, those kinds of things, I, I, I use those as indicators. Mm-hmm. And and then I say, okay, Lord, you have my attention. This is how I'm feeling. If I feel anxious, this is my verse, you know, where it says lean not to your own understanding. It's like, oh, I must be leaning the wrong <laughs> way. Or if I'm starting to feel anxious, it's like, Lord, write my, you know, Right, my balance. Mm-hmm. You know, help me to see what you're seeing, what what's going on, and and it's to me again, it's an opportunity or an invitation to say, let's look at what's going on. Let's look mm-hmm. what's going on inside. What are you thinking? Um, if it's not Jesus, then what what can you replace that thought with? Mm-hmm. Several years ago in chapel, Eric Scott preached on living on the right side of the butt. Do you remember that? <laughs> and I've used that in counseling, and, and I've also used it in class. And given, I said, it's a, it's a, a butt with one T. I don't know if I could say that on here. <laughs> you just, um, just live it on the right there. side of the butt. Um, but it's it's this, I know God can help me, but yeah. I'm this, 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 this. Mm. So switch that around and live on the right side of it. Wow. Because, I mean, it, it, research would even show the recency effect is the last thing that you hear is what you're going to stick with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. even just scientifically, if you switch that around, not to mention spiritually, if you're wow. going to dwell on, you know, but God can help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God promised to be my strength. And I think that's really where knowing the word of God and having those promises, you know, yeah. you promised you would never leave me or forsake me. You said you'd be my ever present help in time of need, you know, that you are my provider, that you're, you know, my healer, all these things. It's like, to have the thought, but, yeah, and then put the God part in there. And I would say don't rule out the God factor because things that look impossible can turn around like that mm-hmm. um, because he, I mean, because he can. Yeah. 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 Now you're preaching. Now I'm <laughs> preaching. Well, there, you go. there you go. Yeah. As we get ready to wrap up, I'm thinking about how everything that you are called to do, pastoring, psychologizing, <laughs> leading, it's a pouring out kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. How do you take care of your own soul? Oh, I guard Sabbath like a ninja. I mean, that's what I say. Anybody says, hey, can you do something on Saturday? Nope, because mm-hmm. I'm going to guard it like a ninja. Um, so I do I do observe Sabbath mm-hmm. every week. Um, in fact, if you email me after 5 o'clock today, you know, on a Friday, it will say, thank you for your email. I'm currently enjoying Sabbath with my family. And so that's yeah. something that I value. Yeah. Um, and then on those Sabbath days, I mean, it just kind of varies. Every now and then we'll say, hey, let's go find a new coffee shop or something. We'll take a book, my husband and mm-hmm. I, and we'll, you know, go read and come home and take a nap and, you know, go to church uh, on a, at 4 o'clock or maybe we'll go on Sunday morning. You know, it's like we just kind of leave it open. Mm-hmm. But probably my all-time favorite um, is I love to go on long walks and I need to be mm-hmm. out in nature. So I walk to the turtle pond um, that's close to where I live. <laughs> Uh, out in the trees. There's some amazing birds out right now. Mm-hmm. But I think just being out in nature and and just hearing the sounds of, I don't know, just the sounds of birds and trees rustling and all of that, it just feeds my soul. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy that. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so much for being mm-hmm. willing to be here and talk mm-hmm. with us today about your life. You've enriched mm-hmm. us. And I I think about the God factor that we've mm-hmm. talked about today. And I wonder where you are in your journey. Maybe you feel stuck in one of those rooms and you're not feeling like there's very many options for you. Um, I encourage you to take Glenda's invitation that the Holy Spirit's just got his hand 
right in front of you. Will you take that and walk as far as you want to with him? Um, the road is limitless. Thank you for listening. We encourage you to tap the subscribe button so that we can continue to have you as our listener. 